Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, Troy Paredes of, of Paredes Strategies, the founder of consulting firm. So we'll talk a little bit more about All that right. in a second. And also uh, Vince Molinari, CEO of Liquid M Capital, is Morning, always Jane. welcome again. So um, Troy, let's start with you. So you've got really an interesting background. So you were a former SEC commissioner yep. um, as recently as 2013. So a lot of this fresh. Um, you were appointed by President George W. Bush in June of 2008 and also host a podcast. Yes. So um, let's start with the SEC. Sure. So talk to me a little bit about your background and what you did at the SEC and then we'll kind of bring it to today. So I had the privilege of being an SEC commissioner, as you mentioned. I was sworn in in August 2008, so right before the financial crisis. So oh my goodness, perfect, yes, oh my that's goodness, right. We all remember timing. that. <laughs> yeah, we all remember that. So I was there for yes. all the financial crisis and the aftermath and their five-year terms that I left in August 2013. One of the things I found to be interesting about serving as a commissioner is the sheer breadth of what you do as a commissioner when you really mm -hmm. appreciate what the, what the scope is of the SEC's mission and mandates. You think about the offering process, you think about the intermediaries, investment advisors, broker dealers, exchanges. You think about a whole host of other market participants across the equity markets and the fixed income markets, yeah. the derivative markets and the like. Uh, it's just a fascinating opportunity. Well, and a lot has changed just since you left, which isn't that long ago, 2013. I mean, we're going to talk about a lot of that today, ICOs and cyber currencies and digital assets and all that. So let's start with uh, the Senate Banking Committee testimony uh, that just recently happened. Uh, the SEC Chairman Clayton, also the CFC, uh, CFTC Chairman. What was kind of your takeaway or your headline from that testimony? Yeah, I think the big takeaway was that both the chair of the SEC and of the CFTC, Clayton and Jim Carlo, very much focused on thinking about whether or not the regulatory environment is appropriate for the developments when it comes to cryptocurrencies, when it comes to initial uh, coin offerings. I think they both indicated that they're very much interested in thinking through with other regulators in the US and I think also around the globe, whether or not there needs to be some additional legislation, maybe additional regulation. I think that's going to be an ongoing discussion. Okay. I took some uh, comfort, if you will, in the fact that not only one, are they focused on these questions, but number two, neither Clayton nor Giancarlo seems quick to rush to judgments that they want to take a thoughtful approach uh, and get it and get it right and that they realize that there's more to this than either of those two agencies perspectives or simply for that or for that matter there's more to this than simply the US perspective That's right. at the same time one of the things we have seen both agencies doing is being willing to use their enforcement authority and that is to say from their perspective, look, um, those agencies have, have indicated they believe they do have a lot of regulations and rules that currently apply, and that when they make the judgment that those rules and regulations and the underlying statutes have been violated, uh, they've not been reluctant to bring enforcement actions, and I think we're going to see more of that going more forward. More of that, and we have seen a lot lately, Vince. I mean, there's been a lot of enforcement action in some of these early ICOs. Some of them have lost money. I mean, how, what's your take on that testimony as well as where we are right now with this? As Troy said, I think the testimony is very clear. Um, I think, as we talked on the show before, if people thought the regulators were sleeping, they are absolutely not. And then I think you're seeing increasing messaging that started with the 21A at the Dow report. Uh, more comments from uh, commissioner, uh, commissioners and Chair Clayton specifically, and even in his informal comments, when you start to see op-eds in the Wall Street Journal, right? Different pathway. So I think the marketplace has been fairly warned. So I think the enforcement actions will increase and increase perhaps with severity. And I think it's been the lower hanging fruit, if you would, the most egregious, obvious uh, participants. And I think you might see start to see the uh, unregistered issuers, uh, the, the non-registered uh, brokers and finders that could find themselves in a bit of trouble going forward. And, so, go and, ahead, and one, one of the things just to underscore is that Chairman Clayton, not just res with respect to ICOs, tokens, the crypto space, but generally has focused on retail. And what can the SEC do to protect retail investors from misconduct? Right. And so when you think about offerings that go out to uh, retail, that's going to be very much front and center when it comes to the SEC's focus. Yeah, because they sometimes have, well, almost all the time, have the least amount of information. And so they're the ones who need the protection the most. If we go back to the core tenants, and, and it was one of the uh, great balances, uh, that having gotten to know Troy a bit while he was at the commission, and his 
uh, pro-business, pro-small business, pro-capital formation, but balancing that mm -hmm. with investor protection. And I think what we find quite often is the smaller retail investors who don't have the ability to fend for themselves, mm -hmm. that we end up in a situation of seeing them to be the most exploited. And when we look at uh, the positioning of tokenization as a security and recognizing it as a security, we have a clear rule book to comply with from AML, from suitability, know your customer, Reg A+, plus, Reg D506C. Uh, so I don't think we need a lot of new invention around that and existing ways to protect investors are right there for us. And, and here's an interesting, I think simple way to put a lot of these points, which is once the SEC determines that a particular token or digital asset is a security, then you trigger the entirety of the federal securities laws. And so to the point that we have lots of rules and regulations on the books, that's a, a threshold question. And going back to what folks at the commission have said, including Chairman Clayton uh, time and time again, including at the hearing, uh, the tokens that they've indicated that they've seen, uh, they think fall within the bucket of being securities. And if they do, then again, you're off to the races in terms of the entirety of the regulatory regime uh, being triggered. Now, do you, is your sense that um, they understand the balance between free markets, innovation, progress versus regulation? Do you think that they get that there needs to be a balance there? I do. Um, and I think it's evidenced by, if you will, the tone at the hearing and other things that have been said by folks at the commission, which is you did not see a rush to say the following we need legislative authority to do A, B, and C, or X, Y, and Z. They flagged certain questions they have, but have said, look, we're still thinking this through and we want to think it through collectively with other regulators at the federal level as well as at the state level. I think what that reflects is, is the technology is new, uh, all things considered, and they want to make sure they get it right. But part of getting it right is striking these balances. What you don't want to do, maybe here I'm speaking now more in terms of myself and putting on my hat as former commissioner, the one thing I'd be very mindful of is why I want to make sure, we want to make sure we have a sound regulatory environment, that that's important for investors to have trust. Frankly, a sound regulatory environment can itself be important to facilitate capital formation because it can help spur participation in the marketplace. At the same time, you want to make sure that you don't have so many regulatory burdens, complexity, duplication, or even simply uncertainty that you end up discouraging, uh, stifling, uh, chilling, what could be very beneficial innovation for the marketplace, and so trying to strike that right balance, I think is going to be, at least I hope, is going to be front and center, but that's going to take a little bit of time to work through. Well, that's one of the things that people who love cryptocurrencies love is the decentralization of it, and here you've got regulators who, you know, so it's kind of a, a strange place to be, so they have to kind of figure that out. They have to thread that needle very carefully, I think, so. Absolutely. Well, look, the, the, as we've talked about, Jane, it's about the collaboration at this point. It is the innovative nature of cryptocurrencies that are being recognized as securities now because we have better guidance. It is blockchain and it's the intersection of regulation with that. So modernization of securities law, meeting innovative technologies to more efficiently foster capital formation for job creation and growth while being mindful and cognizant of investor protection. So I think we're early days still, and both sides of the equation getting more comfortable with uh, the process. Okay, so the headlines, I guess, uh, regulation and enforcement of the bad players, uh, but kind of staying away from the good players and letting the market kind of work. And I think trying to figure it out. Yes. Okay. Um, again, in terms, of, in terms of how to make sure that that balance is struck. And, and I know I keep saying trying to figure it out, but again, I go back to my time at the commission, and one of the things I worry about a lot is if you rush to judgment, Chances are, when you rush, you're going to miss the mark. And some measure of patience to try to figure things out can be important, but also recognizing that during that period where you're trying to think things through and get it right, that itself can be a period of uncertainty, which can be challenging. And so this is all what the regulators are trying to strike. I think the DAO 21A that Vince made reference to, whether one agrees or disagrees, I know there are strong views uh, around that 21A, but if you think about it as an important effort to try to provide some indication as to what the commission is thinking so that folks at least know how to organize their affairs and their compliance efforts accordingly, that can be helpful in terms of trying to wring out some of the uncertainty and perhaps we'll see more, uh, perhaps not 21As, but perhaps we'll see other uh, indications from the commission to give people certainty as to how they're approaching it so people don't uh, catch, uh, yeah, you know, get caught off guards. Okay, big questions. And now it's time Jane? for people in the industry to step in. 
I think it makes okay. Quick I'm question. sorry. Really important point because I missed it, and I think the viewers would love to hear it. I didn't catch the name of Troy's podcast uh, okay. in the introduction. Appetite for disruption. Appetite Is it, I got for that right? I, yeah, and you can find it on for, iTunes, Google Play. Let's say that one more time. Just yeah. so appetite, I'll, I'll say right. <laughs> appetite, appetite for disruption. We focus on reg tech. We focus on fintech. A lot of it's focused on crypto. Uh, digital assets, uh, blockchain, okay. uh, more broadly. So uh, you, can, you can hear it wherever you check out your podcast. Okay. I'm definitely going to listen. Thank so, you. I'm very interested Same in this here. space. So, thank you so much, Vince Molinari, a CEO of Liquid M Capital, also Troy Paredes, uh, Paredes Strategies founder. And thank you as well for joining us. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. You've been watching the Digital Assets Report. Have a great day.